All right, good morning, afternoon, and or evening, everybody, and welcome to the IPFS Documentation and Developer UX Working Group Weekly Sync. Thank you for joining us. If you would like more information, or if you'd like to follow along in the notes, everything you need to get started is at the, is at the readme level of our GitHub repo at github.com slash IPFS slash docs. Uh, we use this meet, uh, meeting as a way to check in with our OKRs, and so as such, we will actually be going through those in the document that I'm sharing on my screen, one by one. Um, Johnny, I am going to wait for you at the end since you are still typing, um, but basically we are starting... <laughs> Our priority for the rest of the quarter is the beta launch of the new documentation site. It is being tracked in the milestone that you see in linked on the first bullet point of the uh, notes document. Um, that's all the work that is remaining. Many of those issues are listed um, as their own recurring items in this agenda because they are their own OKRs, but the rest of them are in the following uh, set of notes. Um, Johnny, I'll wait for you. I'll put, put yours till the end. Um, if, let's see. So uh, call out links between the legacy and the beta pages, um, which is the item I've got highlighted at the moment. Um, there are a lot of items that you're going to see here that are labeled as nearly done, but a little bit derailed due to illness on Chris Waring's part. Um, you know, this does sort of highlight an issue that we've got in that in terms of development, um, he is our, our single point of um, execution. And so um, we are leaning on him really heavily right now and um, really scheduling and synchronizing his workload in a way that doesn't block the rest of the team has been a little bit difficult, but very important. Um, he is nearly done with implementing those callout links between um, the legacy and the beta pages. Um, I took care of the links on the legacy site last week, so those are ready to go. All we need to do is merge the PR. Um, the beta pages were a little bit more complex, um, so he is rolling that into a PR that includes a couple of the items below. Um, Ditto with the content stub pages for content that does not exist yet. Um, Eric, do you want to talk about it? Because it sounds like you, you two were the last up conversation. Yeah, in a nutshell. Oh, I, I see it. I, I duplicated this on there. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> uh, because, it's because it's related to the changes that we've made are, are related to the testing. And so I just put it down there, the testing. But Oh, okay, cool, cool. You know, um, Occam's razor is, <laughs> uh, is really the rule of thumb here. The simplest approach, I think, is going to be the the best, especially when we're talking about a page that is at its core a frustration page. You know, I don't, a page I don't want to see. I want to see the content, and so I, I don't want to invest a lot of mental effort in in absorbing whatever you have there that isn't the content. And so we're just we're making it super simple. Um, and I, I don't know if you want to link and show it, but yeah, sure. uh, just taking away the, the grand, for now at least, the granular, hey, here's the progress of this content, and um, taking away the, the thumbnails of content that is on other sites, and just going with a, a little bare bones, like down at the bottom of the resources to try that text-only approach is what we're gonna use there. And then a simple binary, hey, do you really care about this content? Yes or not really, and if people interact, yes there, that'll help us prioritize. Um, developing that material. We also have a link for each of the, I believe it's, it's eight pages that are going to have this content sub um, temporarily until we finish the content on them. Um, we do have a spreadsheet here with the related links already to go. So it's just a matter of Chris sticking them in there or once he's got the template then I can toss those in there pretty easily. So that's awesome. That is nearly done. Um, SEO meta tags. This issue involves just getting into place the very, very basic SEO meta content and um, ideally a social media link card in each of the content pages in the docs data. Um, I did some investigation last week into exactly how this works with view press bump matter. It's fairly straightforward. Um, Eric, you were gonna make a social card 
then I was um, just going to get that SEO metadata stuck in there this week. Um, bare bones CSS edits, Eric. Uh, just defining the bare minimum, as the word implies there, um, that we can apply toward the like out of the box view press um, theme to just to make the design um, as user friendly as possible. You know, we have a lot of, of content on the left side, for example, and we want to make sure that visually it's it's scannable that you can that you can quickly find what you're looking for. Um, and you know, from a accessibility standpoint, that the colors are of sufficient contrast. You know, we've got some pretty light greens in there right now, for example, that don't quite meet. Um, you know, that that people with that with visibility issues might not be able to read. Uh, so just trying to, I'm, I'm just gonna go through and, and make a quick pass, uh, starting with the sketch file that I have, which is maybe a little bit more, um, you know, trimming away from that, although that that isn't super, super visual and super crazy anyway, but with an eye to getting, you know, not letting the better be the enemy of the good getting something out there as quickly as possible. And then uh, I may try and actually dive in and do some of those edits myself in order to uh, lift the load on Chris. Cool, and I can, also, I can also do some of the implementation if that proves to be helpful. And Johnny, I think you'd sort of volunteered if, if it ended up being crunch time for that too. Yeah, I don't know how well my backend development skills are going to be useful here, but uh, I will do my best to not do inline styles or anything. I heard important tags are really good, so we should always use those. And I know how much you love CSS. So. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, the communications plan, um, I actually drafted all of the content here before the holiday. Um, rough draft of the content. Comments on that content, totally welcome, um, since those are written and probably reflect my own voice to a certain extent, but we have an entire communications plan laid out here. Uh, there are some highlights for some things that are not yet um, ready, <laughs> but our, or just um, URLs, obviously things won't happen until we start posting. You know, I can't link to Reddit until we actually post to Reddit. But we have all of that queued up and ready to go, including the timeline. Um, and the core messaging and the calls to action. So um, that is good. I'm also hoping that we can use that as sort of a working template for a variety of other communications efforts going forward, um, just because it is, it is a rather, rather lengthy document. And if you've never done one of these before, this may serve as a useful template for when it is your turn to do them. Um, so that is already for the next stage of implementation. Um, if we launch on time, our next stage of implementation would be the 9th of December when I start um, putting together, like uh, I'll throw the blog post and the blog repo for circulation and approval, that sort of thing. Um, let's hold off on talking about the IPFS hosting stuff because that's probably going to um, turn into its own conversation and I wanna make sure that we address everything else. Uh, Johnny, you wanna talk about your H2 work? Yeah, just pretty quickly. Um, so we updated a bunch of the headers just so that the, the basic search function that we have um, just works a bit better. Um, so the, the things that people are actually searching for are sort of match up with the headers that we have. Um, so this involved like adding, removing and updating some of them. Um, so me and Jessica have taken a look at them and it seems to work from our end. The next thing we need to do is just kind of reach out to some external people, maybe outside of IPFS project or internally or whatever, um, just to kind of go through and be like, hey, if you search for something, are you able to find what you're looking for? Um, like, is it better, essentially? Do you have time this week to try to do like a 20 minute Zoom call with the two folks from, two or three folks from our internal testing who really struggled with that the most? Um, yeah. I think Lytle was one of them. Um, does anybody else remember, I'm sure that Eric, I'm sure they're in Eric's notes, but um, I, would, I would try to grab 20 minutes with Lytle. Um, Eric, can you think of anybody else who was struggling with the search who Johnny would want to talk to? Um, Victoria had a bit of an issue. So he's reached out to her if she's not busy. Um, okay. And then Hugo didn't actually get to sit down, but he did have some words to bring up about the search. So, I mean, I just yeah. reach out to anyone who's-, who's Yeah, watching, you know, I think, yeah, I think Victoria Lytle and Hugo would be a great fit. Um, 
In terms of mobilization of outside folks, I agree that would be super great. Um, I'm a little bit reluctant to engage with some of the outside folks on something at that level of detail. I don't know, Eric, do you have thoughts? I'm panel process here. Which bullet are you on? <laughs> Talking about um, Johnny's work with the H2s, um, he went just to make sure that they render better in the search keyword wise. Um, I think in this situation, we're probably okay at this stage with internal testing, particularly since after launch, we're thinking about, um, you know, we do intend to investigate deeper full text search with Algolia. Um, do you right, concur? Plus one, yeah, the, the, okay. I think the basic issue with the search is that it doesn't do fuzzy well, you know, yeah. but, and uh, yeah. that's a bigger, yeah. Johnny's work did a lot to trim down or edit the H2 so that they're a little bit cleaner and a little more focused on keyword search. So I think that's going to go a long way, um, at least for now. If yeah, we, all... we did see we did see people, um, you know, you you learn what the search box does very quickly, you know. <laughs> that's and true. So it, you basically yeah. shorten it down, yeah. uh, pin, yeah. you know, you had, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah, I just want to make sure nobody's like super struggling. Um, so yeah, Johnny, if you are all right with um, uh, having a quick chat with like two or three people this week and then taking yep, some notes on that, we can close out the issue. Sweet. Yep. Okay. Um, continuing on the legacy docs deprecation plan. Um, I know we've all sort of had off the cuff discussions on this and we've accumulated some notes. I'm going to start assembling those um, collected notes this week after I get the SEO meta tag stuff done. Um, Johnny, you said you would offer to review this since you've deprecated a site in the past. Uh, anybody else want to play along? I know Chris loads of some, fun. Yeah, I know Chris has some thoughts as well. So I think if Johnny and I can put together a list for Chris's review, um, really this is just about getting our heads in the right place with an initial plan that will then presumably enact in Q1. So not that big of a deal. I just want to make sure it gets done in time. Awesome. Uh, metrics definition stuff. You want to want to chat about that, Johnny? Uh, yeah. So we just kind of listed out on the, the GitHub issue that I've linked there. Um, just essentially, there's these two sections of metrics that we're going to copy. So there's need and nice. So there's needs that we definitely need. So I'll call you up and go. I don't have to try and remember what they are. <laughs> um, here we go. Yeah. So like location, native language of the user. This will be super useful in our localization plan or sort of our efforts to try and figure out what's going on there. Um, how they got there. So that's like really useful in terms of, you know, did it come from Google? Was it a direct link or something like that? Or, you know, did they just happen to type in the exact, you know, phrase they needed to get? Um, and then which pages they went on, how long they stayed on this page, stuff like that. That is pretty much the need. Um, then there's nice to have things. So like how long, uh, sorry, the load time they were on each page, so how long it took to load. So that'd be really useful in terms of like, is IPFS doing what we needed to do in like a fast enough time? Um, then there's like those four other things that are like frequency visits, stuff like that. Um, I want to sync up with Chris just to make sure that the, the top five things that we have in need are in fact doable. Um, I'm not sure what kind of uh, analytics tools we're using. So it really kind of depends on that. Yeah, and he did wake up um, at, at, the, at present, at least at launch, we'll be using GA. Um, and he did um, set up a GA profile specifically for this site on Thursday, Friday. So, um, so I know this is in progress. Um, which is awesome. Um, poor guy's just sick as a dog. I did also add this other question about, um, I know that we've got specific metrics sitting on the helpful and not helpful buttons in the legacy site, but I, um, to my recollection, those are the only, that's the only sort of specific analytics trail that we've got sitting on the site right now. Um, right. So my other question was just, is, is that indeed the only thing that we specifically want to build an analog for? I mean, yeah, if we've still got past data for it, it might as well just make sense to carry on collecting that data, especially if yeah. it's like, that sounds like it's going to be a useful thing. So I'd put that in, in need. Yeah. And it's also been, it's also been um, explicitly helpful over the last two months to identify, um, you know, we had some outliers where people were just clicking not helpful, uh, but right. not surfacing any other info. And that did give us some pointers for things to look at. So awesome. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and then the underneath that, the beta site is this helpful feedback mechanism um, that is getting implemented um, by Chris right now. Last I heard on Friday, um, he said he was nearly done, but was um, not quite there yet. So 
uh, all of these are sort of, you know, it's a, it's a big handful of, of minor tasks, but they're things that are really kind of, we're, unfortunately, he's a dependency on this one. Um, usability testing, Eric, you want to talk through this? Do I? Uh, yes, yeah, so usability testing, are we able to get in uh, on site? Uh, internal, on site, face to face, uh, just a brilliant group of brilliant people who are super engaged in this content and we're very excited to dive in. And, you know, the number one feedback point that we had from everyone is, oh my God, this is amazing. I wouldn't change a thing. <laughs> I'm impressed a little. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we did a, a suggestion or two. Uh, and yeah, and I, I tried to uh, the other day, I distill uh, from all of the many gems, distill some of the actions that we might want to, that we might want to take, um, you know, things like, uh, you know, borrowing from how cool Proto School is, how they have uh, a little sandbox where you can try out code and may maybe, you know, maybe even having like a spun up instance of, of IPFS there. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, uh, you know, certainly if you're doing IPFS, you need to, you need to have something running on, you, you need to set up nodes on your machine. But if I just want to see something, you know, an example of, of, of pinning or whatever, um, it, just like emulation is, is going to tell me, you know, a lot of what I need to know, you know, if I'm trying to just understand a basic concept. And uh, so just little tips like that, you know, that kind of thing, really that kind of feedback um, is, is kind of less about usability and more about uh, just a really neat feature idea from th that can only come from someone who really understands the space. And so um, it was, it's really great to get that kind of feedback, but we had a really wide range of folks, um, including people who have never, who have not used um, IPFS. Uh, but yes, uh, we have, uh, I, I honestly haven't had a chance to, to see whether people have, what people's reaction is to these ideas, because there is, um, there's some implications like for, uh, maybe a tweak to a label or to, um, uh, but yeah, hopefully this gives us a jumping off point that yeah. we can you know, just. Yeah, this was extremely talk, useful testing. To implement immediately. Yeah. Um. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, Molly, you have a good point for JS IPS in a browser node. Um, you can get, yeah, like 90% like of the way there. So we were actually, I don't remember, we might have actually been talking to Alex about um, sort of a good mix of actually using in browser IPFS and then also um, for some of the more complex things, cheating it a little bit with a straight up emulator that was just pretending to be IPFS in the terminal that would at least respond with the right error codes. Um, that turns into a bigger, you know, that turns into sort of a bigger task, but it's a really interesting one. I think that we all sort of like when that was brought up is like, oh, that's a really interesting workaround and we all kind of lit up on that. So. Um, watch that space. Um, actually, Eric, I'll I'll go through um, I'll go through your test plan summary and um, add a couple of issues based on stuff like that that we can at least get in the icebox so we don't forget about them. So, Thanks. sweet sweet. Okay, um, realize we're starting to run out of time. Um, content improvement. Um, to be completely honest, we are pausing on content improvement um, that's been hanging out in our repo until after the beta launch, unless something really dire comes up or unless something from a contributor comes up, um, particularly because I mean, we closed more than 20 issues um, in the quarter to date, which is pretty great. Um, and we don't want to rest on our own laurels, but we do have a lot of other stuff to do right now. Um, Epic 3C, content close reading. This one's yours, Johnny. Uh, yeah, pretty much what it says. I finished close reading. So that was, I've got a solid understanding of what's going on in the docs now. Um, wrote a report which is on the GitHub issue um, and then raised a bunch of issues based off that report. Um, so like things we need to update, stuff that needs to go. Oh, that link didn't work. Oh, it did work. It's just because it's closed. <laughs> ah, I see. <laughs> I'll link directly to, I'll link directly to the... Uh... Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, here is the super exciting long report. Um, Go through it if you want. Don't go through it if you don't want. There's <laughs> um, also a link to a video that you. Ah, there is a video. Oh, right cool! There. You published the video. Nice, cool. And now yeah. the rest of the world can see how I talk too fast. 
Okay, cool. That was great. And here are uh, all of the issues you opened as a result. Cool. Oh, cool. I'll let me link real quick too. Um, and then Jill, you want to talk about Produce School? Uh, yeah. So what I've been working on is mostly a continuation of what I worked on last week. So I've been going through uh, possible alternative platforms where we can host uh, Produce School content. Uh, we haven't found any really potential candidate for that, but uh, it's it's uh, it's a search in progress uh, to find one. Other so, than that, I've been yeah. Go ahead. Oh, is the is is this really just actually exploratory work, or are you explicitly yeah, intending to find? You're sort of you may or may not find something. It's mostly exploratory okay. because. Uh, the requirements we have, we may not find any platform that matches all the requirements. Cool. Other than cool. that, uh, I've been going through elective courses and seeing if some of the content is relevant to, to put in, either improve or create new tutorials for support the school. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Um, so we have one other issue to chat through. Um, I'm also just going to bring us to the milestone. Um, this is all of the things that we have triaged as being absolutely necessary to do before this bare bones beta launch. Um, you will notice that there is a lot of dependency on Chris as our sole full stack developer on the team. And um, based on the fact that we Many of us were traveling um, to meet up in person. We had many of us on holidays. And then oddly enough, as a result of the in-person meeting, like a disproportionate number of us got extremely sick, including unfortunately Chris. Um, you know, this sort of leaves us, you know, we are, we are definitely in a time crunch. Um, the good news is that we have exactly laid out all of the things that we need to do in order to um, release. Um, whether we release on the 17th as originally intended is still a little bit up in the air. Um, due to the fact that the issue of um, the issue of hosting the beta on IPFS is something that lives entirely within Chris's court and that all of the other items that live within Chris's court are very heavy on the cross-team interaction and cross-team usefulness. Um, we have been hitting and also um and also frankly due to the fact that this is a pretty intensive task for chris um he will benefit from having the time and space to devote to that without a whole lot of internal interruptions um so at the moment to be completely honest we are hitting these other options first um that does mean that we would we would almost certainly unless any more of us get sick be left in the position where on the 17th um, we have all of these but hosting beta on IPFS done. Um, so that leaves us with two possible options. One is we hold off until we get that taken care of. Um, the other is that we um, expose the links to the site as is um, temporarily. And you know, this is this is a call that I think really bats above all of our levels of authority within the working group. Um, so that's a decision that's going to have to be made by others. Um, we have, as a working group, given thought to the idea of allowing people to use the site so that we can gather metrics, so that we can continue to do our work, so that we can give Chris and any external, um, internal and external folks that he needs time to do this correctly. Um, this did surface after a very long discussion um, at our in-person meeting a couple of weeks ago about really just the ideas of the difficulties of hosting a lot of web apps using very common frameworks and stacks on IPFS, and that being a larger issue. Um, we did host an uncomp on that, um, and a lot of really interesting and useful stuff came out, particularly the idea of like a very bare bones implementation for a simple site hosting mechanism um, that would actually be built directly into IPFS desktop. And the response to that was like amazing, like ridiculously amazingly positive among all of the folks in our inter in person meeting, which suggests that, you know, this is a 
this is a large issue. You know, we're all aware that this is this is a pretty substantial issue. You know, we dog food whenever we possibly can, um, but if the dog food is not very good. <laughs> Um, then we need to make the dog food better to make things better for everybody. Um, so, you know, this is a decision that is going to have to be made um, by others. I do propose if we do decide to temporarily, um, let me just find this, if we temporarily launch using our existing mechanism that we've been developing on, um, you know, we, we do have built into the communications plan um, some pretty straightforward means for addressing this that says exactly it. You know, if we want to build the doc site we wanted to see in the world, we needed to solve some hitches in deploying the site using our PFS, and that those issues have been pain points to a lot of other developers using common tool sets to build web apps. And we are working on the best means of addressing this, but we don't want to make folks wait for improved documentation in the meantime. And we also want to give folks as much time as possible to give feedback on the new site. So that is where we're at in the moment. It's a little bit of a difficult decision and um, I look forward to the consideration of those who can make those decisions. Molly. Um, is there a plan written down somewhere of the approach we're taking for getting this moved over to IPFS? Um, I, I saw the, the issue, the tracking issue, but it doesn't have kind of yeah. stages or steps. There's a lot of different potential pathways to do this, yep. some that are real hard yeah. and some that are exactly what we've done for Hugo and other yeah. sites like that where yeah. we write the plugin needed to make it work in the meantime which is also super useful for everyone else who's using yeah um, yeah press elsewhere yeah and um the short answer to that is no it is not in the issue because it was stuff that Chris was working on like literally as he was getting on the plane to come hang out with us um but we have had a discussion about that um the most straightforward solution is probably going to be the one that we take um, because that would that would increase the time that we've got available to do something really cool like build some basic um, functionality into IPFS desktop. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a reasonably quick solution. However, um, he was very you know, he expressed a good deal of uncertainty in the time frame needed to test it. And so therefore didn't want to make like a super firm commitment. You know, it's like, yeah, we've done similar for Hugo and the like, um, but um, this, there, there are some areas of this where it's a little bit of uncharted territory. Um, I wish I could be more specific about that, to be honest. I don't remember exactly what those were. Um, you know, he's thinking, you know, like super back in the envelope is like, this is a couple of weeks exercise. And, um, you know, I, as a, as a user experience person, and I think, um, you know, the rest of the team and I had a pretty, pretty lengthy discussion on this. I believe I'm speaking on behalf of the rest of the team. Um, everybody else, feel free to smack me on the head metaphorically in Zoom, whatever that takes. Um, where we, where we were, we were prepared to launch with what we've got right now for the sake of being able to get a couple of weeks of user feedback, of user testing in there. Um, it's also really a commitment to transparency to say we're aware of these issues and we're working on ameliorating them as best we can. We feel your pain too. Gotcha. Um, I just realized I'm late to my other meetings, okay. so I actually have to jump off real fast, but um, I, we have very strong feedback on this all the way from Juan, yep. very clear on exactly what we need in order to communicate this out more, more publicly. Um, mm -hmm. And so a question on my mind is, cool, there's all these other things that are also planning to take up Chris's time. Are there other folks who can jump in and help out with some of those tasks that'll allow Chris to focus? Gil, I don't know if you have a, some front end bandwidth that maybe we can pull over to the most important things. This is why we prioritize and make sure that we can put our, our wood behind the important arrows, but that might be super useful. If yeah. there's some of you can help us with that. Yeah, and it may be, um, to be completely honest, a lot of that is stuff that's like so far in stream that it's basically Chris wrapping up work on a couple of things. So it may not like like handing that work over to somebody else at this point may not be the most productive use of, of his time. Um, I will ask him again about that, obviously. Um, but um, really, I suppose at this point, the the biggest thing, you know, obviously we're all going to combine on anything we can do to take. Chris's workload off those items he's got open. Um, but I think my biggest question for you, Molly, is um, please spin over, you know, what this means vis-a-vis -vis our deadline, whether we're willing to sort of have this two-month interim period as an example of, you know, really just very straightforward transparency while also still giving us the opportunities or tests. If that's not the case, then, um, then we'll delay launch until we get this done. Um, 
you know, that does give us the opportunity to tweak a few more things, but it does mean that we're lacking some user testing. The communications plan, we're ready to pull the trigger on the week's notice on the comms plan whenever, you know, whenever that week's notice exists. Um, you know, obviously we're all very keen on meeting our deadlines. This is our way of meeting our self-imposed deadline. If that's not a possibility, that's not a possibility. Um, so I will leave that in, in your head to spin around. Um, you and or anybody else making a decision on that, you know, we're not, we're not waiting to hear on a decision on that. You know, we're just going to keep ticking along the way that we tick along. So. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah. I think um, top, top level is like, I've gotten extremely clear feedback on this, which is we cannot do a public launch of a doc site that's replacing our existing doc site, which is on IPFS of something that's not on IPFS. So I, I have really clear, like black and white. Um, guidance on this and want to make sure that's clear to everyone else here so we don't spend a lot of time pushing forward on something that's not an option. Um, we can, of course, keep pushing. I mean, we will we will launch on IPFS. It's just a matter of whether we wanted a, a, a several week stopgap in order to give folks a chance to actually play with the thing. I mean, it's it's extremely beta. Um, and so that was sort of that that was what we were we were sort of leaning on is like, all right, this is this is in parallel with the existing site. It's definitely in development. Um, you know, it, so it's it's a little bit different than a straightforward public launch. Um, but yeah, um, I guess our request to you would be to um, you know have an, just have one more thing. See if there's any point in having a parallel launch. If there's not, um, let's let's get that on on paper, um, preferably in the, um, in the issue itself, if you don't mind, which is. Cool, I asked for, for like a plan, yeah. it's listed in there, but um, yeah. I asked yeah. for a plan on that. Yeah. I think that'd be useful too, for us sure. to understand like actually what the timelines are, but I can um, add yeah. in there exactly what our very strong sure. requirements are. Um, sure. That come yeah. again all the way from Juan, like sure. strong requirement. Sure, sure. Um, and I think you know to answer your question about a timeline. Um, yeah, we're still there, there's still a fair amount of uncertainty in that with the test phase. Uh, the actual building of it um, is a little bit more certain, but um, testing still pretty much up in the air. So, so yeah. Um, I'm sure Chris has seen your comment. Um, I will check in with him as well. But I think, um, you know, this doesn't keep us from the pace at which we're plugging away. We just might be a little bit delayed. So. Awesome. Um, does anybody else have any questions? I apologize for running, running over, but I think we are good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. Those of you out in internet land, thank you so much for your time and your consideration. We look forward to seeing you next week. Same time, same place.